All right, the uh, Raw show for Monday was uh, it was kind of there. I mean, there, yeah, was, it there were a couple really... of good matches, but there was nothing that really... It didn't do much for me. I mean, actually, the most notable thing, which is actually funny when you think about it. Well, the Intercontinental thing, I think, was the biggest news. So, well, before that, it opens up with Cody coming down to the ring, and he and Seth talk coincidentally for 23 minutes, during which they make fun of Rock for doing a 21-minute promo. They yeah. talk about how long his 21-minute promo was. And at the end of the day, they talked for 23 minutes. And the irony is that Rock said way more in his 21-minute promo than they said in their 23-minute promo because the whole point of their promo is, they well, we're going to be there on Friday to tell you what we're going to do at WrestleMania. He said he's Rock said about five times as much. Now Rock didn't say much in his in his Friday promo though. Well, Friday no, night. but he said the, the most Friday important night. thing, which is I want you guys in a tag match. Yeah, well, and they said the most important thing, which is that we're coming on Friday. And yeah, but they didn't answer. even answer the question here. Well, they're going to show up. Twenty three minutes, and you can even say, "Yeah, we're going to face a guy." I should know that when Cody first came out, he said, "And I quote, I am unable to talk about Roman Reigns because of a distraction." A distraction that stings quite a bit. Now, of course, I'm talking about The Rock. And then in the opening match on the show... Well, that may not be stings because if you remember when Dwayne did his promo, the big line, this was the, um, the Twitter promo, he said that he called Cody up and Cody agreed to step aside. But when he agreed to step aside for business reasons, you know, he goes, I called up Cody and told him, like, this is going to be the biggest WrestleMania of all time. And, you know, we're all about business. You know, you're about business. I'm about business. We grew up in the business the whole bit, right? So you always do what's right for the business. The right thing in the business is to step aside. This is Rock's storyline. And uh, he said that Cody said that it stings him to do it. So it may not really be a reference to Sting, even though Michael Cole did bring up Sting. Well, yes, Michael Cole made a direct reference to Sting. And this was funny because... He said, just want to wish Sting the best in his retirement, great career. And then Pat McAfee actually said, it was an man. awesome match last night. And man, you never saw Michael Cole run that guy over so fast. He oh cut God. him off and he started talking about this match. He did not want Pat talking about what a great match Sting had last night. So that was funny. Yeah, I think um, ob obviously, you know, I mean, this was a Paul Levesque move, you know, I mean, it's not like Michael Cole did this one just out of the niceness of his heart because you would never do that. I mean, it was like you're told, like, put that thing, you know, like, acknowledge Sting, essentially. And, um, you know, McAfee is, I, you know, I don't know if McAfee knows all the WWE rules or something. But, well, you don't know but that the, rule. But but that, that also the rules have changed, so I don't even know what all the WWE rules are, you know, because Well, based on Michael Cole's reaction, I think that was breaking a rule to acknowledge that you watched a great show the night before that you can buy right now, by the way. Yeah. That's true. That's Although true. Although you may not be able to buy it, it's BR Live, but Yeah. But I mean I think I think that the whole thing is is that um you know, I mean it could be just you want to congratulate the guy. You know, I mean it's he was big, big name and uh kind of show that you're not petty like Obviously, under Vince, was would this happen? It never did, ever. So, well, other than um, when uh, in the middle of the Monday Night Wars, when he would like do the uh, made fun of the uh, Hogan and um, Roddy Piper match. Remember Age in a Cage? So they did acknowledge, um, um, you know, WCW, or when um, they acknowledged UFC. By uh, they used to do this with boxing. Actually, the, like the Monday after like a Tyson fight, and they would go in there and they would go about how. Um, you know, oh, the fight is only like, you know, two minutes long and you paid 40 bucks for a two minute fight. That would never happen in with WWE, that type of a thing. They did, you, you know, when when they considered people with Vince, you know, whether it was and it was not just WCW, but boxing as well, um, pay-per-view competition, UFC, they did, too, on two different occasions, you know, where they ripped on UFC for the fact in, in one case that you, you know, you don't know the match could end in two minutes. You know, um, that had never happened with us. So um, they did used to do, you know, it was not a regular thing, but, you know, Vince could be incredibly petty. Well, uh, the other note from the Seth and and, uh, and Cody promo was that, man, Seth tried to get over diarrhea Dwayne. 
What a bad! But that's not oh. him. That's 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 the um, the writers. Well, obviously, it's not him, but his the... character. If his character wasn't a geek already, oh my god! And but Rock's that was a... going to have a field day with that. Yeah, but the thing that was, whoever wrote that, and whoever didn't, as soon as that thing came out, go, this is going to bury Seth for saying, it, and it's so tacky. And how it got through all the channels. That's that was a as soon as he said that, it's like, oh God, this is like Vince crap, you know. I don't know why. They thought obviously somebody thought it was funny and um you know, whatever. We'll see. But yeah. Yeah, Seth was it's that's it's not gonna be good for Seth. So anyway, the first match was Gunther and Dirty Dom for the Intercontinental title. It was a very good match and wasn't it, wasn't it non title? Uh well, remember, was a- Dom was going like this afterwards with the Judgment Day. Like, he demanded a title shot. They didn't announce it for the title, I don't think. I mean, he was, he was, whatever. Anyway, the point is, he lost. It's not like it mattered. Yeah. But uh, Gunther worked as a total babyface here and just beat the hell out of Dom. JD kept trying to distract. And finally, at the end, uh, there was one great near fall where Gunther tried to powerbomb, and Dom turned into a sunset flip, like a sunset flip powerbomb, and it was a late kick out, and this crowd went nuts for that spot. And then uh, Dom missed a splash, Gunther hit the shotgun drop kick, and then, uh, I don't know, people really want to remember things that Chris Benoit did, but uh, there was a Nitro in 1995, and he gave Eddie Guerrero a powerbomb on that show, and it was the craziest powerbomb you ever saw, and I'm pretty sure that they tried to recreate that here with Gunther and Dominic because, man, he lifted this guy and he held him and he power bombed him, put him in the crab and submitted him, and the place went nuts. And uh, this Gunther could be a hell of a baby face someday. Yeah, yeah. The, um, that, that spot, actually, the, um, Chris Benoit did a power bomb when I was in Japan to Eddie Guerrero. That was the sickest power bomb I have ever heard in my life. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Um, this match, I mean, the one thing, I mean, this is a really fun match, but the one thing I know, you know, got a note because it's so preposterous was, I mean, I had to watch it back because I, it was, it was like, wait a minute, did he really do this? So he goes all out, all out chopping that post, right? When uh, when uh, I think it was JD missed, JD moved. He was actually going yes. for JD, and then Dominic slams his hand into the post. So his hand goes into the post twice, and got, the rest of the match is essentially almost everything Gunther does is just chop the fucking hell out of him as hard as he could with no, like no like the idea like he wasn't hurt at all. Like it's like so whatever you know. It's like it and it was like. I mean, he did not do a chop for about 20 seconds, but the rest of the match, all he was doing was chops with the same hand. I thought, you know, well, he's going to probably switch hands. And it's like, nope, nothing. Not, you know, not wincing when he's throwing the chops, not fighting through the pain when he's throwing the chops, not taking something off of the chops. Like, oh, he doesn't have the power in the chops. Nope. So I thought that is, uh, it is what it is. I mean, it's not the first time he's done that, but I do know that when he was in PWG and he did the same thing, um, he actually did, like, sell it, um, you know, and it made a difference in the match. Uh, this one, it was just like, I don't know, you know. I mean, it, whatever. It's 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 not uh, it's not any big deal. It's not like that doesn't happen elsewhere. But I, it was just very very quick recovery. I'll just say that. Like, it's one thing. Like, if it's a few minutes later. This was right away, and he's just back throwing those, throwing those ridiculous chops at the poor guy. So, there you go. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do: Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today, and don't miss out.